Hi, my name's Alan. Today, we're going to be doing some rudimentary testing of a concept called spaced armor. Spaced armor involves using multiple armor plates separated by an air gap. It first saw wide use on German armored vehicles in World War II as a way to defend against Soviet anti-tank weapons. During my time in Afghanistan, I noticed the same concept being used on modern military vehicles. Looking at battle damage on our MRAPs, I saw that small arms rounds were totally penetrating a thin aluminum exterior layer of armor, but then harmlessly splattering against an inner steel layer. I've been curious about this concept ever since, so today I'm going to be doing some initial testing of my own. Let's see what we can find out. So out here today, we're going to test the, this uh, concept with all these guys. So this is a bunch of spare saw blades. Uh, each of which is about an eighth of, eighth of an inch thick. They are in this big pack. Together, all of these would equal about one inch thick of steel. So we're going to shoot at this and see how many of these eighth inch saw blades a, uh, a round will penetrate through and see if that might be less than what it, they would penetrate through if it was solid steel. We're also going to be shooting at this guy. This is a three, three eighths inch thick solid steel plate. We're going to see how the rounds do against this and then our our uh, spaced armor target, and then we're going to try a third test where we take this sheet of steel with a single thin sheet in front of it and see how that matches up. Our weapons for today are a direct impingement PMAG adapter chambered in 5.56 and an AK pat pattern rifle chambered in 7.62 by 39. The rounds we'll be shooting are going to be 5.56 five, by 45, 55 grain full metal jacket ball M193 from IMI, and the 7.62 by 39 round is a 124 full metal jacket from Wolf. So the goal of today's test is really to determine how can we stop small arms rounds using the least weight of steel. Because in anything, whether it's personal body armor or vehicle armor, weight matters a great deal. So what we're trying to determine is if we give these little spaces in between thin armor plates, a net lower weight of steel can be used to stop the same amount of essentially kinetic energy. So let's go test this, shall we? All right, one note before we get started is we want to take a look at this range. Uh, I just showed up here today and it is just covered in trash. And it looks like someone even had a fire going last night. So please, if you go out to the National Forest to shoot, Always leave with at least one more piece of trash than you brought with you. It really helped keep these areas open to shooting so they don't start putting up no shooting signs everywhere. Thanks. All right, first we're gonna test the 5.56 against a three quarter inch steel plate. All right, well from that test we can see we had a complete and total penetration of that steel plate with a 556. Five, Just clean and through and through. You can see bits of the jacket still stuck on there. So looks like this would be inadequate armor protection to say the very least. I don't think it'll do much better against 762 by 39, but let's give it a shot. Okay, now let's see how that three quarter inch steel plate does against 762 by 39. Okay, well this is something I did not expect. That is, did not penetrate. It made a beautiful little, basically inverted bullet right welded to the steel. And as you can see here, this big old divot on the back. Look at that. I am actually pretty impressed that didn't penetrate. So let's try one more just for good measure. Well, in defiance of my expectations, the second 7.62x39 round also did not penetrate. It did the same thing, kind of basically welded the bullet right into the steel there, made a nice big lump on the back, and did not penetrate the 3 8 inch mild steel. All right, I just wanted to give a good description of what this saw blade target is. This is 11 old dull saw blades that uh, are on this piece of all thread, it's called big nuts in the front and back. 
each with uh, two washers in between them, giving about a quarter of an inch standoff distance between each plate. So altogether, these make a little bit less than one inch thick of steel if you mash them all into one block. But as is, we'll see how they do. See if all these thinner plates will actually provide a good degree of armor protection or maybe more than that three inch, three eighths inch steel. All right, this is the 556 against the stack of steel spaced armor plates. Here we are with the stack of spaced armor targets. Now that first hole near the center was actually my first shot, but it was too close and I figured the washers might interfere with it. So let's take a look at this shot, the second one. Now we can see, and I don't know how well you'll be able to get it on video, you can see it penetrated one, two, three, four, and stopped on the fifth plate. So the sixth plate is undamaged and the fifth plate is bulged but not compromised. Pretty interesting. Let's fire a couple more 5.56 five, at this guy and see if we get a consistent pattern. I fired three more rounds at this plate. Another one hit uh, close to the center, interfering with those washers, but we got a really good one up on this corner. Now you can see here it penetrated like that, so you can see. It penetrated. We got one, two, three, four, and the fifth one once again stopped it. There you can see some real good footage of that. Very exciting. Now this one down here, we had a similar Similar thing going on. Now, these plates, interestingly, are loosening up as we're blasting this target. So that again, we got one, two, three, four, and five. Stopped on the fifth target yet again. Okay, we, so we shot the spaced armor target with 762 by 39. We got a nice hole there. And as you can see here, we penetrated one, two, three, and stopped on the fourth plate back, which is interesting. I mean, man, look, that's a good, good one right there. So we did not pen it, did not compromise the fourth plate back. So that is one less plate, one less eighth inch steel plate, saw blade than the 556 was able to get through. Again, I'm I'm actually pretty surprised by this. I would have expected 762 by 39 to have a bit more energy, bit to penetrate a bit deeper, but looks like it is stopping on that fourth plate. Well, let's blast this guy a few more times and see what happens. Okay, so we another got another really good hit on our spaced armor target here. And it looks like we penetrated one we got one, two, three, and we stopped on that fourth plate again. So one, two, three, and four are totally compromised, though four is not penetrated. Very interesting. Well, let's try one more test and see what happens when we have a thin plate like this in front of that thick plate of three eighth inch steel. Okay, so here we got uh, yet another unshot saw blade about an eighth of an eighth inch, inch thick in front of our three eighths inch thick steel plate. Now, neither one of these are armor grade steel. It's not AR 500 or anything like that. It's just plain old normal mild steel. It's got about a quarter inch standoff distance there. So let's shoot either side of this with the 556 five, and 762 by 39 and see how it performs. All right, this is the 5.56 against the Thin steel, thick steel, spaced armor target. Let's see how that went. Okay, look at that. We have total penetration of that fork runner for precursor plate. It blasted right through that guy. That looks like pretty brittle steel as well. But look at that. Completely stopped it. 
That was the previous impact, just went straight through and through. Where's that? Let's see, did it even def oh, it barely deformed the back of it. Just barely, adding that little bit extra plate to the front. Completely nullified 5.56. Five, wow. Oh. You'd think if it was going to go straight through like that one, just adding a, another eighth inch of steel wouldn't totally defeat it. Anyway, let's uh, try the 762 by 39 and see how it stacks. Okay, here's the 762 by 39 against the combination thick and thin steel target. All right, well this pretty much confirms that this saw blade here was very brittle steel. Look at that, it totally shattered. But our steel target, this is our shot right here, that actually looks to be almost exactly as much damage as that 5.56. So if we look at the back here, yeah, we just got a nice little bulge there, nothing too big. But interestingly, compare that and that little bulge to these big craters and these big bulges from when we first hit this with 762 by 39. But let's load this up one more time with another saw blade plate, maybe one that's not quite so brittle, and see if we get the same sorts of impacts. Okay, so we switched out the saw blades for one that is actually even thinner and maybe more flexible. But 762 by 39 blasted a nice hole totally through it. And then right up here was completely stopped by the 3 8 inch plate. Now actually then, of course, that crater is a lot less impressive than the uh, craters left without any spaced armor plate that we did before. So it definitely absorbed some amount of kinetic energy going through this plate that this plate now is not nearly as bulged or heavily cratered as when we shot it just by itself. Okay, this was our shot of 5.56 five, by 45 against our combination thin and thick plate the second time. Now this, uh, this hole right here, 5.56, five, blew cr clean through this thin plate. You can see it kind of, you can see the spalling off the, it blasted a fourth off that thick steel plate caked on there and it impacted right here now you can see that's a that's a good size hole it's actually a little bit worse than this one probably owing to the fact that this plate is thinner and more flexible than that previous plate so maybe it didn't absorb as much kinetic energy passing through it but it's still completely protected against this this round that uh three eighth inch three eighth inch plate is not compromised, it's just kind of bulged out on the back here, but, and you know, cratered in the front, but definitely a far cry from that total through and through the first time. The conclusion of this test is that a 3 8 inch thick mild steel plate will be completely penetrated by 556 and heavily damaged by 762 by 39. 1 8 inch thick steel plates in a spaced armor arrangement will require up to 5 plates to stop 556, but only 4 to stop 762 by 39. In a spaced armor arrangement involving a thick plate in the rear and a thin plate in the front, both rounds were completely defeated. In this configuration, both rounds were stopped by a net overall th thickness of steel of 4 eighths of an inch. Whereas using the multiple thin plates, it took a net thickness of steel of 5 eighths to adequately stop both these rounds, especially mostly 5.56. Five, Thus, if we want to provide the greatest level of armor protection for the least amount of weight or overall net steel thickness, using this arrangement, where there is a thick plate in the rear and a thin plate in the front, would provide the best protection for the least weight. 
There's a multiple reasons for this, all of which are more complicated than I would like to get to in this video. However, I'm providing a link in the description text below to a document by Aberdeen Proving Ground from 1950 that details their extensive testing on spaced armor and the conclusions that they came to that we have seen translate into the armored fighting vehicle designs of the 20th century. Thanks for watching and have a great day.